Well, Elizabeth, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank Tell you. us, how is Sujit? Right, he's really uh, moving ahead, uh, started school already, yeah. and uh, that's a big move because he's now in with other children, and uh, he's, he's not speaking yet, mm -hmm. but he's certainly got a lot of receptive language and uh, uh, trying to speak, and uh, he identifies with me as his mum, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he, he knows who's boss around the place, uh, he plays up as yep. if I'm mum. So, uh, uh, yeah, big move in the last three years, a big, big move forward. How much of that, the playing up, how much of that is human understanding and how much of that is Well, I think other? it's socialised behaviour. I mean, if you look at a little two or three year old, they know who their mother is and mm. they know how to play up on their mother and, and he's just the same. He's like, he's a toddler man. I call him a toddler man because um, that's what he is. How old is he? Well, he's 33 yeah. now, but coming on three or four. And uh, in terms of his um, development, I, I never say that he is um, uh, retarded in any way, except he's environmentally retarded. So his environment has, has, has caused the problems. Uh, there's no congenital problem with him, and we've had that all checked out and so on. So he's got the ability to learn, and he's learning the good things with the bad things. He's learning how to shove the other boys around, <laughs> and, and he knows his strength and things like yep. that. So. Is there hope that in the future he will take his place in human society fully? Um, hard to know. Yeah. Um, another couple of years and we'll be able to tell. Uh, he's pretty well toilet trained now and he knows how to clean his teeth but it, with help and, and yeah. so on. So he knows the general routine that humans go through. And uh, so that's great. And uh, I think the, most of all, the, the well of love that he's got uh, for people around him is showing up. And I, I like that. What was your reaction when you first saw him? Well, it, it, it's indented in my mind that uh, you know, when I first saw him, I mean, he has feces all over his face. He was eating it, he was throwing it around, he was aggressive, wild. Uh, I couldn't touch him. He, uh, when I did first uh, touch him, he was grabbing me and, and biting and scratching and so on. So you never forget that type of yeah. memory. Uh, he could hardly walk, he couldn't walk up steps. He, you know, the. When you go back, and we were just looking at pictures last night of when I first started walking, uh, working with him, and he was like an animal. Yeah. Yeah, he looked like an animal. Yeah. Mm. And behaved like an animal. Uh, yeah, that's probably. all he knew. Yeah. You were a Christian at that time. Yes, yes. What did you say to God when you saw him? Well, I knew that uh, God had put him in my path. I knew instantly that, that this boy was part of my future. Yeah and uh, that it was God's plan, uh, not just for Sunjit but for me. And uh, you know, when, you, when you're taking a walk with God as I have chosen to do, uh, when you lay l your life down as it says, mm. uh, you, you take what comes. And uh, if I had my choice, I'd be sitting in, in, before my computer writing and, and doing all those fancy things that people think they'd like to yeah. do when they, uh, especially when they've been a convert as I was, you know, to, to talk about mm. your life before and a life after and so on. But no, I had this man put before yeah. me and, uh, and it followed from there. Because, I mean, your training was in that area, wasn't it? It was in behavioural science yeah. and I never thought I'd ever use it because I was a teacher yeah. in behavioural science yeah. and uh, then I went, became an industrialist um, making furniture and, uh, and now I was presented with uh, someone where the skills became very obvious that uh, you know, behaviour modification was the order of the day. The, the feral, what do they call it? It's the feral child. He's feral a feral child, child yes. That was obviously part of the training, though. Yes, part behavior. of my training. Yeah. And as soon as I heard, you know, someone said to me, oh, there's a chicken boy yeah. here, and someone raised with chickens, I just thought, oh, my goodness. You know, and all the, all the learning that yeah. I'd done and the teaching that I'd done came back to me. Was there any inkling when you were doing the, the I mean, the, the feral child part of your training? Was there anything that goes, gosh, this is strangely more interesting than the rest of it or this is significant? Um, yes it was because I knew about all the feral children in the world yeah. and I knew about Victor who was a famous feral yes. child in uh, uh, he, he was in France and he came out of the woods and that was exactly 200 years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Exactly yeah. 200 years ago so and I'd read, read, uh, read the book The Forbidden Experiment and that was a book that almost paralleled the experience that I'm having with um, Sunjit. Yeah. So most of us are familiar with Mowgli and he's quite human. 
Yes, you yes, know. yes, that's so we, exactly we, we have right. No yes. idea. And Jeannie in the United States, she was a more recent one, found in 1973. Mm. But Sunji's the, the, the most recent of the feral children that's been found and put into therapy. So a lot of people are interested in him from yeah. an academic point of view. Is there a, a, a spiritual side of what you do with Sujit? Definitely, absolutely. I think I saw the glory of God um, for the first time when I was dealing with Sunjit. Now that's very strange. You know, yes, I'm yes. dealing with a boy that's been caged up with chickens yes. and I see the glory of God. Yeah, that doesn't I mean, make sense. You know, I just did and, and uh, it was actually when I was toilet training him and I would be toilet training him for hours and hours uh, at an end, you know, waiting for him to do something mm. and then reinforcing it. And I actually had you know, I really had got a glimpse of God's glory then, because you need the grace over your life, and and uh, you need stacks of grace because, well, it's not glamorous uh, toilet training a 33-year-old, and um, so I had to do that, and that's when you know, God really touched me, and He because it was in a secret place, people didn't know that I was doing that, mm. and I would do it hour after hour, and day after day, and week after week, and and so on. And um, I would pray, of course I would pray, because I, I needed God's grace over my life and uh, because you needed patience and tolerance and I didn't have much of those. Mm. I'm, I'm not proud to say, but I didn't have much of those uh, elements in me, in my character. But um, when God showed me his glory and showed me that he was using me, and this was before Sundrit's story was out and about yeah. and so on, so I had no idea that this would happen, but uh, it was really serving God in a secret place. How has it changed your understanding of who God is? Tremendously, because it became more personal. And I also understood that, um, you know, we weren't just to read about what Jesus was like, we had to be like him. Yeah. And Jesus, I, I believe Jesus must have done a lot in a secret place. I mean, we only read a little bit about him, but I, I just love the way that um, Jesus would go out and do things and then he would go back into solitude uh, and me meditation yeah. and his relationship with God and then he would go out again. And I think that's what I became. I, I wanted to do that and uh, it was a, um, it, it, that's, that's when I, I, I was touched by um, the hand of God. All right, Elizabeth, thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome, thank you.